Right, hello and welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is doing well. If I've got my timings right, you'll be watching this Sunday evening and it is mega hot outside and it's been hot all day and you're all burnt and you're all dreading going back to work tomorrow because it's going to be too bloody hot. However, I, as you're watching this, if, if my timings are correct, will be sat around a pool in Greece having a well-deserved holiday that I, I think it's the first, yeah, it is the first holiday I've had in three maybe four years. So don't feel sorry for me, I'm sunning myself up. Anyway, as I said, hope that everyone is doing well. Um, just off the back of the last video, a lot of people have said, I asked about if people wanted to see a, a tent box thing, like I've got on the roof of the van. Um, so I will be doing a tent box video, won't be plumbing related, um, but a few people have asked for that. So that is to come. And in this video, I think it's gonna be a bit of a jobbing video leading up to my holiday of just got two them two big bathrooms done and I knew my holiday was coming and I didn't want any stress coming into it so I've just done loads of little jobbing bits caught up with bits um I've also had a few inquiries for a couple of bathrooms an ensuite um and a pressurized water system that hopefully I'm going to get and we'll be able to get on the channel also in this video as you may have seen the build up the last few months is has been Build with A&E put together the Building Careers live show. Now today, while I'm recording this, today is Friday. I've just popped down to see Tony and the team while they're putting up the Building Careers live show. And I've grabbed Tony just for a little bit of a walk around to explain what everything's going to be doing. Um, however, when the video goes out, it, the show will have already have been. But I am going to film at the show tomorrow because I'm there on the Saturday, um, basically talking to people coming into the industry coming into the plumbing industry the show is about everything in construction but i obviously am on the plumbing stand talking to apprentices talking to people getting into their career um, going through it it's hands-on we've got a big rig with a, a water tank on the top feeds pipe work to taps so people get have a go at putting pipe work in tightening it up i don't think they're going to do soldering i'm not 100 percent sure but we'll see in the video to come about the careers live anyway right let's get on with this video as always hit the subscribe button hit the like button drop me a comment below and i try to reply to as many comments normal comments as possible <laughs> Right, I've just swung down to the Warwick Exhibition Centre where, as you can see over there, the Building Careers Live show is being set up as we speak. Today is Friday, the show is tomorrow, Saturday. Um, so I'll be going to the show, there's loads of other people going. I think Mac from Smart Pipe Plumbing and Eating's coming along. Because the show is aimed at getting apprentices and people coming into the construction industry. So that's what the whole idea behind the show is. We'll pop in in a minute, go and see Tony, grab him for a chat, but I just wanted to sort of stick my head in on the way past because I only live local. Stick my head in and just see exactly how the progress is going. Oh. Here he is, the, the brains behind the operation. Hey, hey. <laughs> I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm good. I'm getting wet. Oh, I, that's my every day for me. All every every you, day mate. for me <laughs> getting wet. <laughs> I'm good, mate. I'm good. It's all looking. It's getting there. It's all looking. Uh, we're Exciting. How are you going, man? I'm good, mate. Good to see you. I'm good. good yeah, you. I'm good. Bear hug, bear hug. So. Let me clip this on your tongue. Yeah, absolutely. Mate. You, yeah. Are, you, are you all right for a minute? Yeah, of course, mate. Yeah, yeah, sir. Cool. Clip that on there. That's all right, mate. Are you good? Uh, pop yeah. it there. Cool. That's it, mate. Yeah. So, it's Tony's brainchild. So, this is Tony. I'm sure everyone knows him, but it's Tony, owner of Build with AE, and. It's your little brainchild, mate, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, but I've got to really stress is that this would never happen uh, without amazing people like yourself, Mark, and so many other people with Instagram and YouTube who have all come together and united and real feel passionate about what we're doing here. So let me take you inside and let me give you a quick spin round. We haven't yeah, finished um, quite setting up yet. <laughs> no, but, I've uh, just had a bit of a look there. round. Yeah, yeah but but so we're getting the flags of the entrance way here. So that's where everyone's going to park so up there. So basically, yeah, what happens is you come through the main entrance yeah. on the side uh, of the, um, the event centre. And then what happens is everybody parks up there uh, on the fields and the paddocks there. You'll then walk through here and obviously you've got all the signs up. Brilliant. And the guys do an amazing job 
job I've here. I've just really seen that. Pleased. That's going up. Yeah, so that'll be like building careers live. It's Brilliant, going up mate. on here, which is really super cool. Now, like, let me take you in here now. So it's a massive space. I didn't realise it was going to be a massive is, space, isn't it? mate. Yeah, absolutely huge space. So obviously. The lads at the moment, we're obviously now on the breakfast run because it's Royal <laughs> Friday. Just seen that. Royal just seen Friday, that. so it's really important. The Friday Friday. So what we're now doing is, uh, as soon as you walk in, bam, it hits you. You can see the plumbing, electrics. We've got the um, careers hub to the left-hand side there. Go Construction getting involved. We've got the LABC. We've got absolutely loads of people to give loads of people loads of career advice to whichever avenue they want to go down. We're going to have architects, engineers, surveyors, any civils, anything you can think of to do with the construction industry, it's going to be happening here. So it's going to be really, really cool. We've then got a tool zone, SB tools are coming down. Um, we've also got- What's that, just demonstrating loads of different tools? Demonstrating tools. Obviously, anybody wants to know about different products, they can ask. There's going to be loads of different makes of different types of tools here as well. We've got the information hub here. So, uh, and then what we're then doing is that we've sort of created loads of jigs here, Mark. So yeah. on the roof inside over here, what we've got is we've got Danny and Will, a couple of other YouTubers and Instagrammers. So just mocking up a roof. Yeah, that's it, mocking up a roof here. You can put some slates down. So people are gonna be able to have a yeah, go, hands have on. Have a go, hands on here. And then what we've got then, we're gonna have a ridge then going in between these trusses here. Somebody wants to knock a bit of stud up here. They so they can. can just have a go. Have a go, that's Perfect. what it's about, come and have a go, you know. Actually what we're doing is created a load of easels here um, to allow people to have a go have at tiling. Painting, decorating, then plastering here as well. So the young lad who's looking yeah. to get into plastering, you yeah. have a knocked up mix there. Exactly. Have a go that. Go. I might have a go at that, mate, because I am <laughs> shit at truck. I can't even get it off the oar onto the trowel. Yeah, yeah well, there's, there's uh, John and uh, a few of the pastors are going to be here. We've also then got Rob from the Mental Health Podcast. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's going to be here be with there. his truck. We've also then got a digger simulator going on here. Oh, nice. We've got two of them, so a massive thank you to Balfabiti and also uh, Flanneries for uh, providing a lot of plant and also RS Concrete. There's a, a loads of amazing people getting involved with this and I can only be so truly thankful yeah, to yeah. those guys, you know, because without... This? What's this section? So, oh, oh this, this is... <laughs> <laughs> I've got to fill so, all that tone, have yeah, I? Yeah, <laughs> so basically what we're doing here, um, I hope you think it's a good idea, Mark. So what I figured, could give these people a hands-on experience. So let me just turn this off, yeah, cool. there we go. So what it is, we're going to put a water tank up here. Yeah. And then we've got an outlet coming out of here, outlet coming out of here with a lever tap on either yeah. end. We're then gonna drill a series of holes through the stud here. Yeah. And then have a, 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 a 90 that will be completely set. Yeah. They can connect onto that, run all the way along then, all the way along here. Yeah. And the same with you, the student, run all the way along and all the same way here. There. And then they'll turn a tap on here. Yeah. And a tap on here and they can have a drink of water. And that's how plumbing works. And that's how it works. Everything you've ever read, seen, <laughs> it's just Tony's just summed up plumbing. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. <laughs> yeah, with, with hopefully no leaks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no leaks. And then what we've got then got over here. So what's this, the electrician's uh, This bit. is the electrical side. I hope so. there's some brooms here. That's the first thing electricians should have, is <laughs> yes, in brooms. Actually, definitely, just <laughs> panning brushes, yeah. They uh, really took a battering on Instagram, haven't oh, they? Yeah. Raised, oh, like, yeah. You know? So what we've got going on here is we're going to have all the knockoff switches here and here. Yeah. What will happen is there'll be then a light switch and then a light switch and then they'll feed then cables all the way along the stud work, all the way around the stud work here. What will happen is because obviously we're very conscious about wastage. Yeah. So what we're going to do is then have cut off points all the time. So that'll be one light fitting. Yeah. Then another light fitting, another light fitting. So basically the same cable gets used seven or eight times. Yeah. Which is really, really important. And to again, us. it's hands on. The, yeah. the, the people coming exactly. here were interested in electric. Yeah. They can get hands on, have a go yeah. at that. Exactly. And that. that's the whole thing Tony's done is it's not just a visual show. It's Hands on. Yeah. Right, let's have a go at that. I'm interested in plumbing. A young lad who's interested in plumbing might yeah. spot this and go, I want to have a go at that. Yeah. And that's it. That's how they, these electricians steal our apprentices, just by having a go. <laughs> and then what we've got then going on here, this is going to be the brick zone, which I'm nice. really excited about as well. Yes, yeah. So what we're going to do here, we, we were thinking about how can we really give people a really good experience of laying a brick. And I think the best way of initialising somebody would be actually just running on a line, isn't it? Yeah. So what we're going to do is you can imagine we're going to have this huge long line going all the way through here. 
mark and what that's going to do is going to allow us then people to run the line yes and then yeah. what they'll then do is they'll give them a hand on having a go and sort of have, have a bit of banter with the lads and that and uh, i'm really looking forward to the brick zone as well as all the other zones and then what we then got going on then over here then is the joinery zone and um so pulled, out, pulled out some of the old school yeah tools. well what i've done like is that i want to give people a bit of a feel obviously they won't be able to use these machines yeah. but what it means is that um uh, they can sort of get a bit of a flavour. We're joining the three benches together. Uh, I've got a massive thank you to DK Joinery to allowing us to give us one of their benches. I've scrammed then this bench from somebody else and another bench. And then what we have done as uh, another big thank you to everybody getting involved, we've listed everybody on the banners. So all of these people, including myself, are, are, are getting yeah. together just to help fact, Tony out for this whole show in fact there you are buddy there look yeah, there, you go. there we go look pride of place town in the middle in the middle baby <laughs> but yeah a, a, a big shout out to everybody on this board yeah. you know who you are and if it wasn't for the likes of myself and everyone here yeah 100%. and especially tony for getting everyone together your little so how, how did it come about was it just a case of you going i want to give something back this all stemmed from tall carpenter and dan cox we yeah. were just chewing the fat one day uh, having a bit of a laugh and then what we then said wouldn't it be cool if we like kind of showed some of these young apprentices how to throw a roof on or do some other bits and bobs and it was then from that conversation that sort of said, right, we'll just get loads of chippies. But what happened with British Gypsum then, we were doing a lot of videos for British Gypsum, yeah. and uh, they were saying they were having an issue massively with getting the youth of today into construction. So what we then actually did, they said, right, okay, let's go away with a bit of an idea. I then pitched the idea then to British Gypsum and loads of other people. And they said, oh, that's really cool. So that's how the event massively grew from... From just that little conversation. Yeah, just and literally. that's all it takes is just a little... Definitely. We could do that. We could... Tony's all for giving back and encouraging people into the whole construction industry, not just bricky and chippy and everything. Yeah. And if anyone who knows Tony knows that he, he is just a full-on character. If he wants to get something done... You get it done. Well, that's, that's what I like to believe I do. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just a quick, brief look around yeah. here. I will be here tomorrow. As I've said, I'm yeah. going to film a lot here tomorrow. That'll be a separate video. But just on the tail end of this video, I wanted to give people a little bit of a sneak look behind the scenes yeah. of Tony and Bill Binaney's constructions. Amazing building careers no, but live. thank you for coming Dan thank you for being in my, uh, involved Matt it's not really, a problem really mate. my pleasure if I can out in any way shape Absolutely. or form no, it's brilliant it's um, really humbling to the, how many people have got involved yeah. it's, it's, just a, it's just a community the, yeah. the, the industry 100%. the community especially the Instagram and the YouTube yeah. which is now the go to for people yeah. and bringing everyone together yeah. but as I said I will do a full video tomorrow the whole time I'm here to put out but it's a bit of a sneak look behind the scenes. So big shout out to Tony and the crew. Cool, thanks. This man. is going to be mega. So keep an eye out for that video and I'll catch you soon. Right, we are back once again at, you'll know it from a couple of videos previously, back at David's house. Probably about a month ago, I got called out. He had an Aqualesia shower that had gone down. Basically, Aqualesia came out, swapped the shower over, not a problem. Then a couple of days after that, he messaged me. There was an issue with his kitchen sink. So I came out, changed his kitchen sink. I didn't film that because at the time I was doing a few little jobbing jobs. So we've done that. A couple of days after that was the immersion heater issue, the video. And I'll pop a link to it up in the corner where we had to, ended up having to cut part of the wall out to get to the immersion heater. And then when I left that job, I said to David, in the nicest possible way, hope I don't see you for a while. He's rung me up a few days ago and gone, we're having the utility done. Um, he's put some, he's quite handy, he does little bits, but he's put some pipe work in, um, thinking he bought it out in the right place, ready to be the utility sink. Now, they've come and fitted the utility units in, and the pipe work he's put in is in the way of the units and whatnot. So, he's rung me up, he's gone, Mark, can you just come and do it for me? So, I shall take you in now. He's also got the glazers here, sorting some windows out. But I'll take you in now and show you exactly what we've got to do here he is you can't help but have me here can you you can't help now we'll get one job done there's another one you're then another one <laughs> then another one you're the serious angel <laughs> <laughs> 
So this is his utility sink. Now you put the point work in for this, David, yes. didn't you? Guilty as charged. <laughs> so what we've got, obviously, utility sinks go in here. We've put the unit in, which is fine. You've got a massive cutout here, but as you can see down here, if you pull that bottom drawer out, it hits the pipe work there. So what we're going to, and, and to be fair, there's not a lot of room. If I can get that back in, there's not a lot of room at the back to get that pipe work sorted. So we're going to trim a little bit of that panel out, put some street elbows on, get the pipe work set further back, and then we've obviously got this big cut out to get the pipe work in, and the tap is very close to this shelf here so we're going to have to shift the pipe keep the pipe work to the left hand side and get it all under there but you tried david didn't you i tried he had a go yeah. he thought he was saving a few quid no he's not he's costing a few <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get these get these drawers out get access into this cupboard and uh sort out exactly what we're going to do with that all right so what i want to try and do is take out this pipe put in a street elbow that's going to tuck us into the back of the unit so I can just come up and out a little bit further on that's going to stop fouling that bottom shelf so if I can get that in there but the trouble is I'm struggling to get to that fitting so I've even pulled out the old school crow's foot to try and hold against that fitting I just can't do it so what I think I'm going to have to do is cut a bit more of this out so I can get onto that. We're going to try and get a new bit of backboard to go on there. So once we've got the pipe work out, we'll just trim some some, some wood, some backboard onto there. But you're not going to see it anyway because the, sh the shelves are going to be in. But just aesthetically, it's going to look a lot better. So, so now, let's see if I can just get my small grips in there. Hopefully I can just to hold against that fitting. Get this one turned out. It's just no. Right. I've got a few of them. There we go. You're a what? <laughs> right, so we've got that out, we can now get that yeah. fitting onto there and then come up and out there right. and that will stop fouling yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. All that just for that. I know. I've had to cut the side there to get in. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get something to cover it up with. Just tack it in with right, let's get. Do you want to pass us in that bottom shelf, David? I just want to make sure it's not going to foul it. There we go, by doing that, because before it was just coming out and catching just the bottom there. So now we know that's gonna work. We'll cut that, we'll bring the pipe out here, get the board on the back so it's nice and tidy. And then we can work from there up to where the tap position is, just there. So that's the hot pipe in and sorted. As I said, we had to cut the bottom out. David's found a little bit of an off cut of an old unit that we've put on there because we cut out massive big sections to get these pipes in. And he's just gonna to touch it in there. So that'll be fine. And as I said, once the drawers are in, you're never gonna see it anyway. But we've come off here now. We've got a full bore isolation valve here and a double check valve there. So I'm gonna bring the cold round again, do, uh, full bore isolation valve, come up and a double check valve. The reason why we're going to have double check valves, I shall explain to you shortly when we fit the tap. 
So what we'll do now, as I said, we'll get the get a little set put on there into the isolation valve and up. So what we'll do now, we'll just pop, this is exactly what I've done for the top one. We'll pop an elbow on there, offer that into position here, and then I'll put a sweat bend on this here. So we'll put that about there. And let's cut it there. And then that will go in there. I'm just doing it, mocking it up at the minute to show you. Then we'll paste it up and get it sold up. But that's going to sit. Let's just tweak that up a little bit. That will sit there. And then we'll pop a clip on here. Cut it there so it's the same height as that one. Put a double check valve on there. And then it'll look nice and neat. So let's get this cut, get this pasted up, get this soldered into position. So that's the cold into position now. I've brought that up. We've just got to lift that up just so it's just in the same height as that one. And then we'll get this soldered up. And then we can get the tap in and connect onto the double check valves, which will become all clear why they're in shortly. So we've got the tap into position. So I've poked the feeds down underneath. And as you know, if ever you've done one of these taps, you've got to get that, that for the actual pull out one bit. And then the two feeds through this tiny nut. And also with this, because it's going on the stainless steel sink, you use this plate that spans the, the weight and the movement of the tap, but you have to cut the lug off the side just to stop it catching on that little recess there. And then I was just saying to David that putting a plastic nut onto a metal body always worries me because they can cross thread really easily and it's the finest thread going up so it's going to take about 10 minutes to get that up to there. So we'll tighten this up and then that's the tap in and as you'll have been able to tell it's got one of those little pull out ones that's got to go there which is exactly why we've put double check valves in and you have to set the height that the wand will pull out because you've got your cat five obviously cat five water so you need your cat five gap from where the hose comes down to where the top level of your water is onto the overflow but we'll get to that shortly let's get this tightened up and uh connect it in okay so we've got this tap in now i haven't turned it on yet but i just want to show you exactly what i mean when i say about the category five air gap so imagine that the plug's in this sink and the water is filled up to obviously this overflow level. So your water is at just below there. That's the highest that that water level can ever be. So if you pull out this, that cannot, the end of that cannot be able to sink into the water because then you run the risk of back siphonage. If ever there was an issue, it would pull this dirty Cat 5 water back up into the tap back in it never happens but just in case it does you have to have that air gap so we've got the air gap there but what i also do is put on these style taps is put two double check valves in line there so this retracts back in of its own accord with this weight here now this weight also acts as a stop so if i pull that out to its furthest extremity it's just above that air gap and that weight is also stopping that from going that little bit further into the water. But let's say for instance that played up or it slipped down or anything and it was allowed that that could go into the water, then you've got your two double check valves in line there to prevent it. So that is what your Cat 5 air gap should be. On taps like this, that's what you should do. I always put them two in and also make it so that you've got that air gap from your highest overflow point to where your water is. So that's all on, just got to turn the water onto that. We've just got to connect the waste up now, get the basin strainer in. As you'll know, these are like razors around the edge here. So always, if you can, peel it off from underneath because I'm sure we've all done it. We've all sliced our fingers on that. So we've got the waste in, I've put the strainer in, 
that's all in position. We've got that on there. We've connected the overflow. So now I've just got to glue up these two elbows like so and uh, get them into position. Get a little ring of solvent weld around there. And then this is where you've got to be quick because it'll go off instantly. that's all in that's tight yeah it is flowing up a little bit there but there's not a lot I can do with that where that waist has been brought out was slightly too high but it's still going to run out sometimes the traps are higher anyway but that's not a problem that's not a problem so we'll let that go off have a bit of a tidy up I've turned the water on to the tap but I haven't put anything through it yet so we'll let that go off have a tidy up and have a test of it then Elbows have gone off now, let's give it a test to make sure everything is all in order. Right, the plot, as always, with this house, has thickened slightly. As you can see, we took the tap off. Now, as you may have noticed, when this happened, I completely forgot to film everything that was going on because instantly we started stripping stuff out and trying stuff. But I'll go through with what happened. The tap was on there, we've turned it on. The flow to the cold wasn't great, but the flow to the hot was horrifically bad. So instantly what i thought is maybe it's the double check valves causing an issue so we've disconnected the double check valve connected it directly off the full bore isolation um, and run it through connected the tap directly to that and it was exactly the same it was just piddling through so we went and got the weir gauge out now i went around all the taps in the house and the hot on all the taps were running about six five to six liters a minute apart from this one which sort of said to me all that there's another tap through there and a, kick, and a tap in the garage um, they were all running five to six litres a minute this one was the only one with the issue so I then went and connected a bit of pipe onto the end of the uh, isolation valve run it off into the bucket and yeah five to six litres a minute here so we knew the flow was here so then I took the tap apart now it's not a cheap tap but if you look here it might look the sort of same size as a normal hose, but it's not. It's, let me see if I can turn one of these out. Yeah. It is like 8 mil. It's a tiny bore. Now let me get, for instance, these are on another tap that I've just picked up. Now you can see the difference straight away with them. So there, yeah. huge difference. Now, obviously these are the flexes that come on normal taps. Now pick just a normal mixer tap up here, which is what they've come through. And, that, and I know that's gonna work fine, but it was more the point of the such a small bore, A, going in, and because we had the nozzle that pulled off the end, it's then gotta come back down through that, back up that, and then out the, the head that pulls away. And it just, the flow, the water flow rate was just, I mean, I'll, I'll double check back on the video and see if I caught a bit of it before I stopped filming, because I assumed it was done and it was just air trying to find its way through. So to cut a long story short, but I've already told you the long story, taps out, we picked a replacement tap up. Yes, it hasn't got the, the pull down head, so it completely gets rid of everything that we said earlier on about the category cap about the category five water gap but it was just good to go through that with you 
I'm going to connect it onto these double check valves anyway. Should be fine. If there's an issue, we then don't need the double check valves and we can go straight to your isolations. So, second time lucky, let's get this tap in. It's always something. Always something, David, isn't there? Always yes. something. So we've done a shower, we've done a kitchen tap, we've done a immersion eater that was an absolute nightmare. And now we've done this. That was should be a straightforward job, but has turned into a the customer from hell. Yeah, he's here. <laughs> he's here. <laughs> right, let's get on with this. We've got the new tap in position, poking down through, and it's just an excuse to use this. The new rad tap kit, as always, to get onto the back of here. But to be fair, they seem quite long, so we might struggle with the tap kit. But anyway, we'll pop. We'll. Uh, Get the bracket on, get it tightened up, and then we can see exactly how this tap's going to perform. So right at the tail end of that job, just as that last tap was going in, the battery went on the bloody GoPro. So we fitted that standard normal mixer tap and tap worked absolutely fine. So it just goes to show that at the tiny little small, honestly, it must have been five or six mil. I've never seen at the diameter of any of them flexi hoses that small before but as i said it had to go them two small ones then back down the loop for the handle that pulls out so if ever you come in to fit them just make sure double check them valves you know and just make sure it's a decent size flow to it anyway david was happy with it he's now got his utility done so touch wood we won't be at david's for a while <laughs> 